so in today's notes, we're going to take a look at the properties and attributes of polygons. So the top of the page, it says, in geometry, a figure that lies in a plane is called a plane figure. A polygon is a closed plane figure with the following properties. So a polygon is formed by three or more line segments, which are the sides of the polygon. Each side intersects exactly two sides, one in each endpoint, so that no two sides with a common endpoint are collinear. Each endpoint of a side is called a vertex of the polygon. So these figures here are polygons because they are closed, right? It's a closed plane figure, and here we have one that's open. It's also two-dimensional. So this is not a plane um, or polygon, it's a solid because it's not a plane figure. Um, it's formed by three or more line segments. So here, this is not a line segment, this is a curved line. Or here, they're all line segments, so three or more. Each side intersects exactly two sides. So this side here intersects this side and this side, for example, okay? So this side right here goes past that side, okay? Um, it says here's that no two sides with a common endpoint are collinear. So this is what's going on here. Now for vocab, convex versus concave. So in a convex polygon, all the diagonals lie inside. So I cannot draw any more diagonals of this quadrilateral, which also looks like to be a uh, trapezoid. Here, if it's concave, we can and we are able to draw some of the diagonals outside of the polygon. Remember, a diagonal goes from one vertex to a non-consecutive. So in red, this would be a consecutive vertex, and this would be a consecutive vertex. Remember, our endpoints are vertices. So I can't draw the line segment to one of these two vertices because that would be a side. So the non-consecutive would be this one here. Regular polygons versus irregular polygons. So a regular polygon has all sides congruent as well as all angles congruent. So all angles congruent member is equiangular and they're marked to be congruent where all sides are congruent with equal lateral, and all the sides are noted to be congruent. If it's irregular, all angles are not congruent and all sides are not congruent. So let's look at our table as far as classifying a polygon. So a three-sided polygon is a triangle, four quadrilateral, five pentagon, so on and so forth, six hexagon, Seven heptagon, eight octagon, nine nonagon, ten decagon, twelve dodecagon, and any fifteen, sixteen, seventeen sided um, would be the number of sides then gone. So N stands for the number of sides. So if it had sixteen sides, we just write sixteen dash gone. And here are some examples for these polygons of what I say a regular triangle would look like versus irregular. Regular quadrilateral versus irregular, regular pentagon versus irregular hexagon and heptagon, hexagon and heptagon, okay? So when we look at the angles of a polygon, okay, and looking at those two, uh, we will of those regular um, versus irregular because all the angles have to be the same, we determine what all of them add up to, so the interior angle sum, and what all the exterior angles add up to by drawing diagonals to create triangles. Because we all know that a triangle, so we have one triangle, is an interangle sum or has an interangle sum of 180 degrees. Now the exterior angle sum, so say they were each 60. So 60, 60, 60. Okay, and we draw the exterior angles. So we extend that, we have a linear pair, so it'd have to be a sum of 180, and therefore that's 120. Extend this one, we have again a linear pair, 
Well, if all interior angles are the same, then all exterior angles are the same. That would also be 120. And then extending this one, this would also be 120. And 120 times 3 is 360 degrees. Okay? We can't draw any diagonals in a triangle. So if I look at this vertex, right, and we only want to draw diagonals from one vertex. The only diagonal we can draw is this one right here. Okay? So now we end up with two triangles. So to find the interangle sum, we know 2 times 180, which would be 360 degrees. Now, let's also say it's regular. So each interior angle is 90, right? 360 divided by 4. So that means, I don't need to draw them all because we know they're all going to be the same, that the supplement of 90 is 90. So 90 times 4 would be 360. Hmm. Is it always the same? So in the pentagon, we're just going to look at one more to help us see the pattern. I can't draw a diagonal here because that's a side, so I draw one here. And the only other one I can draw here. So now I end up with three triangles. So 3 times 180 is going to be 540 degrees. So we take 540 and divide it by the five angles. One angle is going to be 108. So if I extend this side for an exterior angle, the supplement is therefore 72. And 72 times 5 of those angles is 360 again. So it looks like the extra angle sum is always 360. Okay, and we can try that for the hexagon, heptagon, so on and so forth. If we look at the pattern here, well, every time I increase the side, I increase the triangle. So three sides, there's only one triangle. Four sides, we had two. Five sides, we had three. And another pattern as well is that the number of triangles is always two less than the number of sides that the polygon has. So that's how and why, on the next page, this formula works. So let's write at the top that the number of triangles is two less than the number of sides. So if a polygon has n sides, well, if we want to use that pattern of multiplying by 180, we would first subtract 2 and then multiply times 180 for the interangle sum of a triangle. And we just said that the extra angle sum is always 360 degrees. So number one, find the sum of the measures of the angles of a 15-sided polygon. Now, if they didn't tell us they were exterior angles, we know that they are interior. So plugging it into the formula, 15 minus 2 times 180. Well, you can type that whole line in or do 13 times 180. We get an interior angle sum, or all the angles add up to 2,340 degrees. It's important that you include that unit of measurement. Number two, so the pentagon in a diagram to the right is formed by five rays. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, yes. What is the degree measure of angle X? So angle X is an exterior angle. And we know that all the exterior angles of a polygon, any polygon, it doesn't matter that it's a pentagon, always add up to 360. So let's add all of the exterior angles. So we have the exterior angle X. Uh, the exterior angle here is 82. Exterior angle here is 58. Exterior angle here we do not have but we have to find the supplement of 136, which is 44. So now I can add the 44 and then add the exterior angle here of 104. We get 360. So combining all these like terms, we get x plus 288 
equals 360 degrees. Subtract 288 from 360, we get 72 degrees. Number three, it says find the value of x and y. Let's take a look at our polygon. So we have one, two, three, four, five sides. So we have a pentagon, okay? And I know that all the sides are the same. So if you have a polygon with five sides the same, all angles are therefore the same. So this is x, 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 okay? The interangle sum we found on the previous page, but if you didn't remember it, you first have to find the interior angle sum by doing 5 minus 2 times 180. So 3 times 180 is 540. Now, x would be one of those five angles, so we can just take 540 and divide it by 5. Okay? So then x is equal to 108 degrees. Well, if x is 108, we can use this linear pair right here. It's one way to find y. So we could say that y equals 180 minus 108. So then y would be 72 degrees. We can also say that y equals, well, 360 is what they all should add up to. And there's five of them. And we also get um, 72. Okay. Number four. If the sum of the angles of a polygon is 2,520, how many sides does it have? So we're trying to find the n, okay? The sum of the angles, so that's the formula, n minus 2 times 180, that gives us 2,520. So we have to solve for um, n. So I'm first going to divide both sides by 180. So on the calculator, 25, 20. Divided by 180 is 14. So n minus 2 equals 14. Add the 2, and n is 16. So it has 16 sides. All right, next and last page. Number five says find the number of sides of a regular polygon whose exterior angles each measure. Okay. So that means I took 360 divided by the number of sides it has, because the number of sides it has means um, the number of angles are also the same, that matches, and the number of interior angles matches the number of exterior angles. And we get 45 degrees. So if I solve for that, by putting this over 1 and cross multiplying, we get 45n equals 360. Divide by 45 and n is 8, so we have 8 sides. Noticing I'm including units every time, which is really important. And number six, find the measure of each interior angle of a regular nonagon. So they're all the same. Well, I first need to know what they all add up to. So that would be 9 minus 2 times 180. So then 7 times 180 Is 1260. Okay, so this is the interior angle sum, and then one angle would be 1260 divided by 9. And we get 140 degrees. Last two. Find the number of sides of a regular polygon whose interior angles each measure 171. So if we look at what we did up here, we took the interior angle sum, and we don't know the number of sides, we don't know n. So we took the n minus 2 times 180. Okay, that's what we did here to start. And then we divided that answer by 9. Well, 9 was our number of sides. So this was the n each time to look at the pattern. So we do n minus 2 times 180 over n, and we get 171. Put this over 1 across, multiply. 171 times n is 171n 
equals 1 times n minus 2 times 180. Well, here I'm actually going to distribute as I do that cross product, because 1 times anything is itself. 180 times n is 180n minus 180 times 2 is 360. So subtract the 180n, we get negative 9n equals negative 360, divided by negative 9, and n is 40. So we have 40 sides. And last, find the number of sides in a polygon if, so we're going to have an equation where we're solving for n again, if the sum of the measures of the interior angles. So in finding n, that formula, sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180. Is is your equal sign 4 times as great as the sum of the measures of the exterior? Well, all the exterior angles in any polygon always add up to 360. So 4 times as great as that would be 4 times 360. So I'll go ahead and distribute again. I don't have to. There's another way to do it. I could start by dividing this product by 180. So 180n minus 360 equals 1,440. Add the 360 over, we get 180n equals 1,800. Divide by 180 and we get n is 10. So it has 10 sides. And that is it for your day four notes.